Let's talk about geography for a moment, Afsani. Uh, there was sort of, I think, a bid on European equities. Has that come off? Yeah, I think we, what we saw is uh, in the middle of the week, people thought that uh, uh, that uh, European markets had overcorrected, and then um, and then that sort of stopped towards the end of this week. I think that coming into the next week or two, Europe will continue to be under pressure, and depending on how long this war takes and how much longer energy prices in Europe, which are almost like a multiple of what we're paying here, will continue. If we're paying for natural gas in the US for a couple, a couple of dollars per MMBTU, the Europeans are paying like 10 times that. So just imagine the price of the components as well as for consumers and how that will impact consumers there. I'm sorry, talk to us a little bit, I'll call it the plumbing of the system, essentially. MSCI took out uh, Russia, and we saw ETFs that were in Russia. It's like they, they can't trade them anymore, which has really yeah. wreaked havoc with that. And how's China doing? So the super interesting thing that has happened is, David, if you go back historically, 2006, uh, China and, and Russia had almost the same weight. In uh, There was at one point where they were both 10% of MSCI. Then just before the war, I think Russia was about 2.7, just under 3% of MSCI. Of course, as of this week, the share went to zero because it got taken out of MSCI. So here you are with China being in excess of 30%, and if you add Hong Kong in excess of 40%, and if you include China, um, uh, Hong Kong, and Taiwan not as, you know, as one block, but as um, sort of an area of Northern Asia, that's a huge block of emerging markets and you have Russia at zero. Somebody at some point when they do the report card, and Mr. Putin has to say what happened in, on your watch in your country and with the markets and the companies in your country. So that is really, really interesting. The other thing that happened uh, over the last um, couple of weeks is because commodity prices went up, the share probably of a number of Latin America countries that had gone down a lot in MSCI has probably started start to get adjusted to higher levels. I'm sorry, what about tech? I mean, Rock Creek had their note out at the end of this week, and then you had some, what I found to be stunning numbers about the NASDAQ. So while um, everybody is aware that uh, NASDAQ was down more than 20%, huge numbers of companies, more than 40%, were down. The share of companies in NASDAQ, particularly the smaller companies, that was down was huge. But, and there were like about 20% of NASDAQ was down by more than three quarters. So that is a huge, huge um, hit to many companies. And I think that will continue where there will be bifurcation among the better companies with better value, with better ability to generate income versus the ones who sort of benefited from the last five, six, seven years momentum in the markets. There's so much uncertainty. I know it's impossible to know what will continue or for how long, but two things. One is the move to U.S. from other alternatives like Europe, but other EM uh, investments, uh, but also the move to uh, value versus growth or, or tech. Do you expect that to continue for a while, or is it getting close to the point where you so-called buy the dip? I think the move towards value has really just started. I think um, you're not going to have gov the U.S. government put another um, set of many trillions into the market. So you're not going to have what happened you know, post-2008 and post-2020 happen. It's going to be the market trying to uh, work in a very different environment with higher inflation. So I think the kind of returns that we've seen over the last 10 years are sort of behind us. You're going to have more obvious kinds of returns for the companies that deserve to um, to benefit from growth and who who are um, who are doing well. Where you so and and that is David. I think a move towards active versus passive management that will be a big change in the markets coming forward. Quickly here at the end, I'm going to put you on the spot. I don't know the answer to this question. I know that you at Rock Creek have a portfolio. You run against other portfolios based on ESG, environmental, social, and governance. I know in the past it has done better. Is it holding up in this kind of chaotic marketplace? So the really interesting thing is everyone is looking at oil prices, but also uh, the if you look at the value of the ETFs, even not active uh, stocks or, or private companies, for um, energy, uh, solar, wind, or uranium, which is sort of looking at, uh, at directly at nuclear energy, those have gone up quite a bit too, between 10% and 20% over the last couple of weeks as the war started. So 
I wouldn't say that they've done as well as wheat or as nickel or as um, oil, but um, certainly have done well. And looking forward, I think we'll be the beneficiaries of what's happening, not just in the US, but of course in Europe, as we've seen what the ECB said and what the uh, Europeans have said about moving much faster into renewables to become self-sufficient and to build up their energy security.